My belief and a lot of car buffs belief is, you know, we're, we're, we're not owners of these vehicles, we're caretakers, we're custodians of either history, a, a period of time. But this time is for you, whoever's going to buy one of these, to uh, continue that journey of just being a caretaker and, and, and seeing these things live on. It's Mike Garland with Carlisle Events and Carlisle Auctions. And as the Fall Carlisle Collector Car Auction quickly comes at us, it's taking place September 29th and 30th at the Carlisle Expo Center in conjunction with Fall Carlisle. We have a couple of special collections that are going to cross the block. The first collection that was announced for Fall Carlisle, it belongs to this gentleman, Dave Farrow of Quakertown, Pennsylvania and Totally Auto Inc. Dave, how you doing? Great, great. So we have, a, we have a nice gallery of cars that we're going to showcase. Let's start right here with this beautiful Dodge Ram pickup truck. I bought this one brand new. This is the first V10 extended cab Dodge Ram built. It was built a month day and hour of my wife's birthday. So it's a V10 Laramie SLT extended cab, long bed, four wheel drive, 2500 HD. So its name is about as big as the truck. Uh, we made this Cuda hood long back with AAR fiberglass and uh, we might get to clear in this. It's got a little, couple of little blemishes, but other than that, this thing's got 81,000 miles on it and it's ready to rock. We go from this 90s beauty yeah. and we okay. make our way over to the 80s now. And this one, I mean, I, I wouldn't be ashamed to take this one off road, but it also looks great. This truck is, uh, <laughs> I'll be driving this one right up to the auction. Um, this has uh, obviously the Linex paint on it. You can't hurt this finish. I mean, uh, we just wanted a tough truck. It doesn't have super tall tires, but it's got a real nice 33 on it. It's This is one of the fastest Ram Chargers I ever drove. And we got four buckets in it. I'll tell you, if you even look at the wing, that's a 70, obviously, off an E-body, and uh, runs right down the pillar. The, the lines are just perfect. Uh, this is the one that everybody my age dreamed of back as a kid. I've been kind of known for crazy small details that nobody notices but me, but this grill, remember this is an 85, and this red line here is just to mimic the 70 Cuda grill, which had a red line through it. This here happens to be a 68 Charger uh, emblem, and as you see the red, you know, goes the stripe, so I gotta make the side black. You know, little details that make a big difference. Like, if you take a look at that, you walk around the back of this, you'll see the same kind of attention to detail. You know, the TA style pipes. Like I said, the way this wing fits this pillar is just, and most people think it came that way, but we made the emblems. So you've showcased the 85 Ram Charger, not the only 80s era Ram Charger we're gonna talk about, but let's go back 40 years to this 1947 Dodge. You call it a battle wagon. Talk about this beauty. Well, I, you know, I wanted one of these since I was five years old, just like every little boy. When it showed up here, a customer had brought it here and I just fell in love and hugged it. I was planning on putting it on top of that V10, but the truck was too nice and I thought about it swapping the body onto a diesel truck, but it's just so nice and it runs so good and it starts minus five, it starts plus 115 degrees. Um, it just runs, it's been through the mud pit, it does anything you ask it to do. So I just basically decided to leave it alone. You know, that's perfection in my eyes. From the 40s, Dave, we jump forward to, again, a Ram Charger. This one from 1986, and this Black Beauty, even here in the summertime sun, it really shines. I know you drive this one, you have some fun with it, you take it off-road, and it could be someone's at this Falls Collector Car Auction. So talk about this one. Well, it, it, it's gonna be someone's. This is a 7340 in it, 727. This happens to be a, a Prospector SE, so it's got both packages, which is kind of similar to like an RTSE Challenger. would have the luxury and the, the performance. We went ahead and jacked her up and detailed out the suspension. There's four brand new tires going on it. And somebody's gonna really have some fun. She's a howdy. And it'll ride like a Lexus going down the highway. So it's a pretty nice, you know, pretty cool setup. We've showcased two power wagons, Dave. We go back to the 70s now with this very original 1977 Dodge truck. What's the history on this one? Talk about this. Uh, this is an old military truck, M882. We got it just as you see it. Uh, it was stored, it was, this is basically the original paint. Um, 
they all came green, I guess, and then they painted on top uh, fire engine red. We're starting this auction with uh, a charity, Blue Star Mothers, which basically is a group of mothers throughout the nation who have children that are serving. We're gonna give the first 10,000 from this vehicle to that charity. Uh, they're gonna give it to somebody who comes back just not right. They don't, something's wrong. They, they'll probably be needing that. So we're gonna paint this back to Army Green and we're gonna put the Blue Star Mothers flag on the front, new interior. This is gonna be a completely different vehicle when you see it next. And I'm sorry to the fire, fire engine buffs, but you know, Blue Star Mothers, it has to be green. We've showcased a lot of Dodges, and that seems to be your taste, the type of rides that you like, but we make our way over here to a 90s era Chevy flatbed, a low boy. Let's talk about this one. This is another one that I had the intentions of um, putting a Dodge on top of. This is a 3116 Caterpillar turbocharged diesel six. It's this thing will haul anything. It's a nice, real nice driving truck. And I always loved the low boys from the old race cars. You always saw them with the spare tires on the top. Uh, one thing, a couple things about that, the low center of gravity versus, you know, a, a tilt body, like a flatbed, it just goes down the highway so nice. Uh, I wanted an old look, so I asked my mom, I said, what would remind you of the 40s? And she said, uh, gray and burgundy. So I said, okay, and that's uh, Sting Gray from an 18 Jeep. <laughs> and that's, uh, the Burgundy is a uh, 67 Barracuda. We will have a wood bed, which will be burned. I'll show you what that is on another vehicle. It'll look just be perfect, and that'll be on for the auction. Now, Dave, we've showcased six great vehicles so far, each with a story and each with a special place in your heart. But where we're going next, I think, is the kind of car that's gonna put a smile on your face and just might be the top seller of the auction. We're gonna head to the right here and a beautiful 1967 Plymouth GTX. And when we pulled into the driveway, this was the first thing I saw. The purple <laughs> rear end blends between the pink and the blue and the teal, and of course the engine. So tell the story of this 67 GTX. Uh, well, <laughs> that's a long story, uh, but uh, I got it, I was 17 years old. I've known the car since I was five years old. Our neighbor across the street, coincidentally, uh, he was the original owner when we when we did the search. Most people know Totally Auto, know this car. I mean, it's never taken a second place at any show. It's, I think, 12 magazine covers, a couple times on TV, nice trip to Dubai, uh, and it's been in climate-controlled storage. In fact, when I pulled it out today, first time maybe two years, the whole car turned white. <laughs> um, it was just feeling the humidity for the first time. Uh, we built this car in 91 and 593 miles to date. Uh, I gotta admit, most of them are burnouts and having fun. Bryce Road, Mopar Nationals, of course, Carlisle. This is just my baby. Uh, somebody's gonna get a really, really good car. <laughs> well, Dave, your collection's gonna cross the block starting at four o'clock on Friday, September 30th. And this may very well be the anchor car. We've got these trucks. We have this 68 Plymouth over here. It's amazing, 67 to a 68, but this one is original, which means it's a great jumping off point for something, someone that's looking to get into either a project car, a restoration, or they just want to drive it, right? Yeah, like I said, we run the gamut. I think we're bringing a nice assortment, you know, all the way from a show winner to a show starter. You know, you could take this car, uh, as a body guy, restoration guy, it's nice to know that underneath this paint, this car's original paint, uh, there's nothing hidden. So that probably saves somebody $15,000 when they go to restore or restify whatever they're gonna do with their car. Uh, I just saved it for that exact reason. I know exactly what I have here. Twice, I almost accidentally hit the key to start this car when it was running. It's just so quiet. Everybody who sees it says, it's, a, it's like the quietest car they ever heard. Maybe the loudest whisper, who knows. I can just shove the mic right in there. I'm gonna try to put a caption like, <laughs> you say this 68 is quiet. I had the chance to connect with you at the Carlisle Truck Nationals, a record-setting truck show. You brought this 46 Dodge pickup truck <laughs> to the show, and it was quite the opposite of quiet. <laughs> this might be the gem truck of the showcase. You've done My some work on there. this one. Let's talk about that. 
Yeah, uh, Eric and I built this in this barn. I just, I don't know why, I got a whim. I wanted the holy grail of everything. I wanted something that would run tens and a quarter, does, to ride like a Mercedes down the highway. I wanted at least 15 miles a gallon. Uh, I also wanted to be able to pull over a G in a turn, and I wanted exactly 50-50 weight distribution, front, rear, left, right. Well, we succeeded. <laughs> I only used some hand tools. Uh, the rule was, other than the welder and the grinder, that it would carry every tool we used to build it. Because the intention is, to, was, is it was, and has been twice cross country, just literally trouble free. Um, four wheel disc brakes. The engine itself is pretty rare. It's a Mopar Mega Block. It's got Indy heads on it. A lot of, you can't find that block. It's on Obtanium right now. I can give you a little peek. Uh, what we did here is set the engine back. Uh, I have a real good friend and his name is Bill Riley from RMS. He's a suspension genius. We set this engine back 16 inches, down four. It's almost a mid-engine if you look down the center line of the front axle. Custom-made control arms, the undercarriage is show quality. I wanted to keep the interior nice and the engine bay nice. But other than that, this is what we bought from Arizona. It was sitting uh, under an open air pavilion, just waiting for me. So like I said, my wife and I have been in this. You, you pick a spot in this country, we've probably been there. Um, this is what I was talking about with the burned wood. It's a real nice effect and it makes it look, it's brand new wood, but it makes it look like it's you know 80 years old. It's something really hard to find is these uh, the original glass NOS lenses. We just shortened up the factory brackets. I wanted something that looked like it came that way. The idea was that you could put a before and after picture next to each other and you couldn't tell the difference. Like I said, we wanted to be able to drive cross country. I've done literally thousand mile days in this vehicle. I just drove it out to Carlisle. So that's only 130, but we were averaging 15 miles at a gallon. And I left 10 minutes before it all happened, but I heard somebody in a truck like this did I think seven burnouts at Carlisle Truck Show. So I raised the seats so that the seating position, you know, it's not a huge cab and there's plenty of room now because you sit with your legs down as opposed to straight out. So when I'm in here, this is just a great ride. Uh, I've had big guys and they can't believe how quiet and rattle free. It pulled 1.3 Gs in a turn. It'll stop on a dime. It'll lift the front wheels. And yet it'll drive a thousand miles down the highway and take you to wherever you're going. One thing that's neat, well, there's a lot on this truck, but this is a uh, bronze tinted glass. It's not film. And of course the window is just like butter. There's no, this is like a brand new car that looks like it's 80 years old. Now these were uh, six volt. We converted the 12 volt and this is kind of neat because this horn here on the original truck was bolted to the top of the valve cover, straight, almost like that scoop. So six volt, I thought to thinking about it, we had to make this valve cover uh, for clearance. And got to thinking, well, they, they had to bolt it on the valve cover, I'm gonna bolt it to the valve cover. So we converted to 12 volt, bolted to the valve cover like original and tuned it <laughs> to be, you know, I'm a Mopar guy, what can I say? Well, Dave, we talked about the 67 and now I'm sitting in it. And this thing is beautiful from the interior. It's beautiful from the outside. All of these cars are awesome. Thank you. You know, you are selling them as part of this collection. I had a smile on my face. How do you feel about that? You know, everyone you've asked, you know, you know why I saved it. They all have a good feel to them, a good vibe. This means the world to me, but somebody deserves it. To take their time and take care of it. Who wants to really keep it going? 593 miles. I don't think there's one spot on this car that looks any different than it did the day we built it in 1991. Well, you've got a smile on your face now. I hope you have a smile on your face come September 30th when it's all said and done with. There's nine people who are gonna have smiles on their face, trust me, because anybody who buys one of these vehicles is gonna be driving at home thinking, wow, I got a really good deal. Well, and you can view all of these cars online right now at carlisleauctions.com. You can call us, you can sign up to become a bidder. Get all the details again, carlisleauctions.com. And Dave, I can't wait to see you again in Carlisle in uh, just a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's all in a couple of weeks now. 
I really thank you, Mike. Thanks, Dave. We rocked it. <laughs>